Can a husband and wife study in the US together, each on their own F1 visa? Can they take their child along? And can they do bachelors after a gap of 10 years? Well, today's video is a real F1 visa interview experience of a couple, Catherine and Kevin, and they are proving to you that all of this is possible and taking you along their F1 visa journey. This is a highly inspiring story. Keep on watching. Hi, I'm Kevin. That's my wife, Catherine. Yes. Hi, Kevin and Catherine. So what do you guys do? So right now I'm in States. I'm doing my bachelor's uh, in BYU, Idaho, Brigham Young University. I'm doing my communications bachelor's. I'm doing digital marketing and public relations. So you finished a year, right? Yes, I finished a year. And Catherine is joining you now for the same yes. Yes, I am joining him now. I just got my visa. We are about to fly in like another four days uh, together. And uh, I have been working uh, before that. So now we are together studying. I'm studying in the same university. I'm also doing, I'm majoring in communication and I'm doing video production as my emphasis with social and digital media. So how many guys, uh, I mean, how many years of work experience do you have? I have around uh, 10 years of work experience. Okay. And you, Kevin, how many years? I had, I had four years, four or five, four to five years. Okay. Of work experience before you decide to. Yes. Work. Yes. So what was the main motivation? Uh, what led you to this? That, okay, now I want to study. Of course, I'll be very, very honest that I wanted to create more opportunity for my family and for myself. I want to see myself grow. And that's when I thought that I want to go abroad and uh, study and uh, have that quality of life, which I wanted to increase for myself, the knowledge I wanted to gain. So that's when I thought, let's give it a shot. Was it like a collective decision that both of you decided that, okay, both of us should study or did one influence, be, okay, he went, so now let me also try. So and- it's... So it started with both of us wanting to study. The the uh, original plan was that we both will be studying. However, we knew that we initially we wouldn't have been able to fund both of our like the process till end. So we decided that first Kevin would try, and then I would. Uh, th- the first plan was that we would uh, you know go with him as dependents, and then once we are there, then uh, we'll settle in. Then I'll, I'll apply probably in a year. So uh, we were not able to go to with him as dependents. So the so he went because he had to start his education and the plan that we had that after a year I would you know like accompany him with the bachelors and start my uh, graduation so we did that we like I did that being here so I had my son we have a three-year-old son also so Kevin went and me and my son were here for like a year and uh, meanwhile I applied so um, the eventual plan was to study together but obviously you can like, do it together. Right. So, yeah. like, what kind of feedback did you get like from people around you when you said, okay, I'm going to go to US or I want to go to US study <laughs> after you know this gap and also start basically from like a bachelor level. It's not even like, okay, you're going to go, you know, for uh-huh. which is still okay, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's still okay in the sense it's still common, but uh, starting from a bachelor level, what kind of signals did you get or what kind of... I think I'll be very honest, not to offend anyone, but it's... It's more like a society norms that yes. uh, that is there in our heads and I've never been part of those society norms that I can't do this because of this reason and it's a sad it's a sad because we we are living in a generation we're living in a time where we should not we should not uh, think of these things and do our best and I'm yes I'm turning 30 I turned 30 last month but uh, there, it's never too late to give up on your dreams right if you want to if you want to buy a car in the age of 60 why you should not buy that car because you're 60 no, it's just an example that, uh, yes, people did talk about it, that Are, ab to ab, uh, uh, age ho gaya, itna age ke baad you will uh, be graduating as like, so what? It's okay. Uh, I, I'll be happy. At least I'll accomplish my goals that I want to be a graduate in a broad university that will very enhance my profile and my experience. And then when I will move on from that point, it will be uh, very strong and firm with my career and with my confidence that I need. And... Uh... But honestly, just like uh, Kevin said, there were a lot of technical um, reasons that people were giving us. And I'm not saying that they were right or wrong, but there were a lot of, uh, you know, ifs and buts, you know, you guys will go together because we both have sponsors, you know, like separate sponsors. So, um, you know, like when we tried earlier, we had one sponsor who was sponsoring the entire family. So there were like so many things that financially you guys will not be able to do. It's going to be difficult over there with, you know, having a son as well. And at that time, he would have like two dependents and uh, you know like the visa process will not go through so there were like so many so many I would say myths or 
were you know like conditions that were put on us that uh, you know we like now when we look back we understand that there are yes technical things but they are not solvable you know if you understand the right route you can do you know like you can like um, overcome that but uh, initially we just had to like you know like take our own faith and still take a step because we didn't get a lot of yes and, and that's where your magic comes in <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that is much later. So basically, you figured out your university, you got the admit, you got your sponsor, everything, and then started the entire visa. Yes. And, and one more thing, I wanted to mention. I'm really sorry, I'm stopping you because right. when I started my application, uh, I started watching your YouTube videos, and there was no Instagram channel that you had. And uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, you were like, and I was like, there is something, there is something that you have when you share your knowledge and skills that is very, very uh, what I would say, what's the word? I would say very simple. Yeah. Very simple. Easy to understand. It's easy to understand for any layman. Uh, layman. Uh, usi cheez ki zarurat hai hamari country mein kyunki logon ko basic cheezon ki knowledge nahi hai, confidence nahi hai, and that's where I started telling Catherine that. Uh, uh, Sachi's videos are really nice. Please watch. Please watch. Please watch. And I kept telling her that. I, I remember that. And then she she was like, "Arey, I don't know. I don't know because I'm busy." But I was like, "You know, you have to watch because she has a lot of things to offer on videos itself." Yeah. And then I was, I I'll be very honest. I will financially very crunched, and I would have taken you. Yeah, that. Yeah. And I did have this major course, like the one that. It was yeah. It was. Five beginners house. Yes, but we did take two of your workshops. Workshops, yeah, it really helped. It really helped. I don't know if you believe it or not, but I actually remember you both attending the workshop together. Both of us together. Yes. Yeah, we did it together. We did. We did. Because not very, like very few people have video on. Yeah. You were like one of the few people who had a video on in the workshop. Yes. Yes. And we were talking. I remember, like, I don't know why. I just have that image. Yeah. Oh. That was the second time that when we were applying for the visa, because we did have a first rejection uh, when we applied as F1 and F2, me and my son. And then the second time when we, uh, you know, planned, that is when Kevin, you know, started all the research, found you, and he realized that oh, there are these questions that we need to prepare for, and you know, like those understanding because people who are around us, even people those who have gone. there we didn't get that kind of a help you know ki aise questions puchte hain you know these are the ways that you have to be prepared but when he did that research and the second time we actually went through your entire workshop and we understand that oh okay this is the dynamics that we have to prepare so that helped us a lot so, so just recap your visa journey first you applied for fnf together that got rejected then you applied again F one F one again rejected. Yes. yes. He applied alone. Kevin yes. Alone F one. That third interview, what did you feel was the difference? Like, was it just because okay, you were applying alone, so the officer mm-hmm. felt more confident that okay, you will come back, or was it just like you're asking just for me? Yeah, your interview. Yeah, yeah interview. my interview. What I felt because it was really devastating when we got denied twice. But what I realized that now at this point that uh, our finances were not strong enough at that point when I was applying that. Even though because, you had a sponsor who was taking yes. care of you. when we changed our case all together okay. and he felt that yes financially i am stable i can go and study and then i yes i was definitely prepared for the questions that he had and the confidence that i was speaking with so he he asked me three questions it was barely 4 minutes and i was on point with the things very aware of the people who were in front whatever question that he was asking in for those particular people mm-hmm. and i was like hey, i think he's going to have this pattern and i need to have the same pattern i guess i'll prepare and i start preparing on the spot for those questions and and uh, it really helped he did ask me same question he asked me the guy who was in front of me. and uh, yeah and then it was it was not that big of a problem on the third time for me okay. and uh, he said enjoy your education and congratulations yeah mm-hmm. so this was last year fall 21 yes fall, same year. time fast yeah. forward to fall 22 is when catherine decides that okay now it's my turn i want to next study so how did you apply? you had like quite a bit of background now you like yes. your awareness i would say that absolutely true so i had i for a more in depth prep right yes so what was the reason for that so uh, initially i had applied for the april semester but there were no visa slots in delhi or india i should say so we were not able to get any visa slots uh, so then uh, that is when in, i think in june kevin decided to fly down because he is like uh, i think my presence is required and we will be able to prepare together um so i had shifted my uh, deferred my um, my semester to fall and um, so that's when 
so the entire thing was that uh, even when we got the visa so that was because you had put that on your story uh, that the visa the appointment yeah appointment sorry sorry appointment yeah so you had there was a one saturday i remember and then the slots had opened up yes yeah, you had uh, and he was following you re- religiously very honestly and he's because like i w- i am sorry to stop you because even when i'm not like on the visa up front now i don't need the visa but i still watch your content for information thank you so yeah. much I like it. <laughs> and not that I need it for her or this and I to tell I told her as like you know I randomly also go to yeah. her page and watch what she has to offer which is really good yeah. because I can any time have yeah. friends or family who would need some information yeah. I can guide it to you or tell myself listen yeah. you can which do this like which which I do I never I never stop the information that I have for somebody or for anything. And we were sta- standing at the bank yeah. and I opened up his story as like you literally in the like, middle of I, like she was a, doing some very important work in the bank and i was really tense that week main ro bhi raha tha maine kaha yaar family ka kya hoga main akele fir akele jana padega theek hai and it's like you ran i, I you opened ran, up ran i opened up the... your story i was like baby baby sachi just updated it and she's like who's sachi i was like that the girl with the girl who i've been following she she will help us out please go check the appointment please do it do it and she did check it and we got it oh. yeah <laughs> Inside the bank, uh, like you're standing oh, outside. Inside the bank. Yeah, inside the bank. So yeah. I, I was literally doing something on my phone uh, with the manager, and Kevin ran inside. I said, like, like, "Leave everything." He's like, "Leave everything. Look at the story." And I, was, I didn't read anything. I just saw visa slots open. Okay, so I was like, "Okay." And usually I'm like, "Yeah, अच्छा मैं काम खत्म करके हूँ. Let me just finish this work and then I'll do." But something happened to me also at that time. I was like. I just left everything. I got up. I checked the slots. There were no slots in Delhi, and so I had everything on my phone only, like all the logins. So I checked on my phone. I logged in, uh, and there were no slots in Delhi. And so I was like, okay, there are no slots in Delhi because sometimes it's like just like a thing. And then I just he said check Calcutta. Okay, so I checked Calcutta, and bam, there were all the slots were open. <laughs> and then I started chewing, and like Ken, the slots are open. Then on the spot, we were just standing, and everyone's like, what's wrong with these kids? <laughs> <laughs> you booked both the dates and <laughs> booking about like <laughs> you booked the dates and then you started bawling <laughs> yeah, I, i started praying and thanking yeah, so. i started thanking you also because of course you're and part of our journey and you texted you as well after that yeah i guess you did right because yeah you you're your family now i hope you know that because you're part of our journey throughout now with my visa and her visa yeah, you know. in a year so yeah it was yeah. i was really grateful for the information that you keep sending and posting on your uh, yes yeah. so after so after that uh, you know like that incident uh, we had to then decide his ticket was on 22nd of august and my visa date was 22nd of august and 23rd of august mm-hmm. so then there was like whole thing i wanted him with us so again like a whole big story he shifted his dates to um, september and then it's important having that moral support yes you know and i'm glad that he was there for that so he went with me to calcutta so um, that time it, uh, you know it was kevin suggestion that uh, we take my son inside with the you know during the interview and i was not on board with that because i was like how will i you know like concentrate and everything but while i started the preparation i started watching your videos like personally i actually religiously started watching your videos i started taking notes and then um i had also attended one of your workshops in my previous uh, like last semester when i didn't get the visa i had attended a workshop of yours again it was the same workshop but i still wanted to attend it mm-hmm. so uh, after that uh, you know i did get uh, like some links that you had shared so i had made the note of the, all those things so while i was watching your content and everything you mentioned about that uh, visa um, prep course okay, and there were like lot of details and everything and see we are not financially that amazing but then i i i felt that you know this time it is really important with all the experience that we have because one thing that we also did in my application was that in the i20 also i showed personal funds which we did not know to do with during kevin's time and we had all the funds to show but we didn't know this information that even personal funds if we show it's a big thing right even though we are 100% sponsored so in my case i was very focused on you know showing my funds as well because i also have like a minor you know who's a dependent so we had that so that i20 was obviously a little heavier as a document i had a 100% sponsor and um, so uh, so with that i realized that i have to create a very strong profile uh, because 
we did not want any second chances in this you know it had to be like one shot so uh, so no it, it was like that investment uh, and then there was this moment where i had to convince uh, you know like kevin that i need this course he's like all the videos are on you know like thing we can't we can't afford it and we had those discussions for a week almost and then i, I was so you know like focused that i knew you know that i need this because everybody's preparation is different some people can just you know prepare with video because kevin is like that he did his preparation like that but for me i need a little more guidance in things so then at, at the last moment kevin was like if you feel go ahead yeah. and i can say i've been saying this to everybody who i've shared my experience with that you know taking that course was literally life changing for my profile because you know, and then that's when you came in because you actually you know uh, streamlined my profile in such a big way and uh, and especially the mocks the mocks were like the game changer of the entire thing because all the questions i was so prepared with that uh, it didn't matter what the visa view actually asked me you know because i was like okay and the best thing was that the same questions you asked in such different ways that you actually prepared my mind that it can be the same answer he's just tricking you with like another sentence probably so that really helped me with like a i would say that i was 110% prepared and yeah and then of course my son was there in the interview so talking about your son like we also had the discussion when i asked you are you taking him yes yeah because my husband is insisting and i was like you have to take him yeah exactly but even to at least take them they yeah. just change the way you look to the view yeah. it just gives a very wholesome picture yes yeah. so we were also very careful like actually kevin was very careful of how you were dressed you were dressed in like yellow he was wearing a yellow shirt formal shirt i was wearing a yellow suit so you know you like all bright and everything and interestingly l was also interviewed he's just three but the we sir actually spoke to him and you know for me that was like an interview of him mm-hmm. so and uh, thankfully l was like really he asked yes, just to like yeah him. so first time made him sit on the counter after asking uh, the vo because l was like literally standing on the door and he was like getting a little agitated so i asked him ki yeah, can i make him sit here he's like yeah that's fine so the moment he sat he, he the vo had the passport uh, you know like i had a passport so he knew elroy's name my son's name is elroy so uh, he's like hi what's your name so he said elroy so, uh, then the vo said that where is your mama mama so he's like he pointed at me and like here she is and then he said where is your daddy yeah. so he's like uh, dada is upstairs <laughs> and then uh, he said are you sure he's upstairs so my son said no he's outside <laughs> so then he started laughing he's like he's outside so it was pouring that day he was raining really heavily so he's like does he have an umbrella he's like whispered a little so he's like yes he does so then i dropped it saying he doesn't have an umbrella i looked at ellen you know so it became like a conversation and the beauty of it was i think for from the viewer's perspective that the kid did not need a translator you know it was like a direct conversation he was understanding and was in yes accent and everything which so many adults are scared of exactly <laughs> so you know so he understood like the family environment that probably we have and you know so that created a good and one more thing which i noticed when she was telling me i think she was he was also trying to confirm uh, the parents relationship yes yes absolutely duly because he's not just generally having that discussion he's trying to know because the kid is always around parents so he's trying to know that where okay, is the father where is the father who's the mother yeah is this you know because they have to make sure everything is real absolutely so yeah. one more thing that happened was uh, i had uh, thanks to you i don't want to sound repetitive but that is true because thanks to you i had prepared all the documents and then i when i sent you the checklist you said you need to carry your husband's i20 and visa right. and interestingly the only document he asked was the visa of my husband you know and uh, also that was the only document in my entire folder that was like colored photocopy you know because i had it bright nice <laughs> yes. so uh, so when the interview started he obviously first he spoke to my son okay and then um, after so that uh, you know nervousness also, also went so he then spoke to me he's like he saw he then he started looking at my profile uh, and then he said so has your husband started his started his education first question so it's like yes he has completed two two semesters uh, he's com- he's completed two of his, his semesters he's like okay so do you have a copy of his visa so um, so thankfully i did i expected you not to have i feel yeah, because exactly. so uh, i i know that he would have thought that i would not have those documents and so i took it out the only colored copy that i had and that was also coincidence um, because i got that in last minute so i uh, gave it gave that to him so that impression was also nice and the moment i gave the visa um, visa uh, in photocopy to him my son actually saw the visa and he's like look that's that <laughs> he was involved <laughs> 
in the interview. So I was like, yes, I'll that's data. So then he, he oh, reviews it. Half of your work, Catherine. <laughs> I think he did nothing. He did everything, in fact. <laughs> It's so true. Yeah, so he let us know much about three of us, but I think there's one silent like person who controlled it. He was definitely not silent during the interview. Thankfully, yeah, he's very talkative. My son is very talkative. Like he very he wants to communicate and interact. Yes. Yeah. So he's like, Mama, look, that's Dad. I was like, Yes, Dad. I said, Yes, that's Dad. He's like, Mama, that's Dad. And he started laughing. <laughs> and what? I had to say, Okay, alright, that's yeah, that's Dad. Okay, calm down. You know. So then he he stayed quiet. So um. So then when he saw the, so it was like the entire experience that the VO would have had, you know, with the preparedness <coughs> and like obviously L being part of it. So then, uh, then he uh, jumped to me. He's like, um, so, so he asked me a trick question. Uh, so he said that, so I see that you were already worked in the States before. So again, if I wouldn't have prepared, I would have freaked out on that question. Okay. So, but I was, so I said that, uh, for, for I took a second as like, um, no, I didn't work in the States, but the company that I worked in is based out of US and, but I took all the projects in India. So I worked here only. So, so then he's like, oh, so so he didn't even say the name of the company. He just said he worked on the stage just to trick. So mm-hmm. then he said, oh, so more good foundation like the company. So uh, he said the company's name. He's like, oh, so that's based out of US, but you you were you worked here as like yes. So when I said yes, so I continued with uh, on my own. I described my profile, okay, because he didn't ask that. So I said that yes, I you know like I was the community manager over there and I explained my job role and my description. So he said so he cut me off because I obviously I told. <laughs> Uh, he cut me off. He's like, so how did you decide on this university? That's when I told him that I got to know this from church. And because it's a church university, they have a tie-up. And then when I decided I wanted to study, I, uh, you know, I researched on the university. And then we, um, you know, then I talked about the good points of the university that it has a creative agency. And everything. So I did, he didn't get, let me move to the third point. He cut me off. He said, so how are you funding your education? I said, I have a 100% sponsor uh, who's Brett Kessler. So uh, I, while I said that, he's like, who is the sponsor? So I told the background of the sponsor. So that you know this is how we know and this is how he is uh, funding us so, the, so that was the last question and uh, he said that uh, okay so then he was typing and everything and meanwhile Elroy kept saying looking at the VO saying mama he's from church he's from church so <laughs> Because he was wearing he was a like shirt. A shirt, you know, like a formal attire, and that's how we dress in church. So he kept saying, like, "Yes, Elroy, he's from church." Just keep quiet. So um, while he was typing and everything, so after that, he asked me, to, uh, you know, like place my fingers, and he said that your visa is approved. Happy travel. So and then he said bye to my son, and my son said bye. I said thanks, you know. So he said thank you. So he left. So that was the whole period. It's a good story. Like it's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All visa experiences we get to see. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very good experience and in fact one interesting thing the viewer was like uh, I, you know he was also a very interesting person he had like a piercing and he had like a half bun you know like half high was I didn't look like he came out from a disc before his shirt and just came okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was also interesting so um, but yeah taking L was like a biggest advantage I had mm-hmm. you know so that created like a very good impression of our entire family I would say and then of course I was prepared with all the questions so that added to the whole thing this is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this. So one last thing for people in your position, like couples, because every day I get DMs from people saying that me and my wife are planning to study or me and my husband are planning to study and we don't know whether we should even consider US, go through all of this hassle, you yeah. know, uh, because I mean, the US visa process is something which is, I would say it's painful, right? It's, you will not know what will happen till that moment. You have no clarity at all. So uh, what would you advise people, that, you know, just from your entire collective wisdom of two of you? I would, I would suggest that uh, as a couple, actually, it's a good thing to go and educate yourself because if you're going to especially going to US uh, if you both study you have those resources to work also so that you can sustain if because first I didn't thought of it when I was applying alone and I was taking them as dependent it would have been difficult because I am only allowed to work 20 hours you know so but when we both have 20 20 hours at least we can sustain the basic necessities in United States. So I feel that I would want to encourage couples to go together and educate yes. themselves. And it's a very wholesome experience and they can manage which semesters, which tracks and, you know, whenever, when the first person is going to the track, the second one can have off track mm-hmm. and then you just go vice versa. It will work out very nicely. Right. And then of course you would want your uh, partner to be with you, you know, and, you know, everything that you have. <coughs> so that's the biggest thing. It's that like I like distance and time separation, right? It's, uh, yes. it's not like, okay, take care, just visit. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I would actually uh, encourage couples to actually go and uh, try and just the preparation that they need to focus on. Yes. So, um, you know, for me, I totally agree that uh, we, we didn't know that at that time, of course. But uh, the first step should always be that uh, study as a couple because it makes a lot of things easier, you know. Um, and um, yeah, so I don't want to repeat the same points that Kevin said because they are absolutely accurate. Um, one thing that I would want to add to that is especially in our case, um, we had that gap when we decided to, you know, study because I had like a 12-year gap. He also had like a significant amount of years. So um, so it's still not a red flag, which people usually say. Um, I would suggest that... Uh, uh, if your gap is well prepared you know then you just have to explain your journey uh, and you have to be really well prepared for what you were doing in those years and you have to justify that and also try your best to connect that to why you're now studying so that journey if you're able to build it's oh because 12 years gap for a graduation is not less yeah. especially sun and everything so the situation but is also, technically also one more sorry to stop you also one more uh, thing this is this the system of gap and stuff this works in india a lot mm -hmm. but in us when i'm i'm giving a us interview there's a united states person sitting over there taking that interview for them they approach education when in their 30s and 40s also i was also on their perspective thinking that it's a developed country and they would not think in a such a way they would need explanation for sure but they would not question ki he's 30 32 or 31 why are they studying now if i have the right answer mm. so we have to be really confident that we want to educate ourselves regardless of the age that we have absolutely so uh, and uh, apart from like with that it is so important for you to understand where you will go and why is this course important i'm sure that that is the basic of preparing but understanding the the depth of these questions is so important because I didn't know that until I joined your course because I was like yeah, I'll give this answer, yeah, I'll give this answer. but it's, it's not that difficult but it's not that easy you have to get into the mind of the VO or basically just get into your own profile you know because I know that uh, I'm not going in details but I know that you changed some of uh, the details of my course as well to make my uh, you know like profile streamlined and that played such a huge role otherwise you know it would have been very you know hey vaya in the air and would have asked 300 more questions but because my profile was like on point uh, as you know in line with the course uh, so so that part is if you're able to figure that out it doesn't matter you're going after two years or after 20 years as long as you're able to justify your profile is working and as a couple you should oh, if you have the finances or sponsors try and go together mm -hmm. like not as a dependent uh, and if you do have dependents then i like you should have so much funds to show that you're able to justify that okay i will not be a problem basically is that what's my learning right yeah absolutely all the best keep in touch take care bye see you thank you so much bye. all the best for future and we'll surely connect soon bye then bye bye, bye. bye. So I really hope that this interview experience has inspired you and given you more clarity on the F&B ZAP process. If you too would like to prepare with me, then do get in touch. We have a detailed seven day program. This is a seven session series wherein we do end to end prep, start by understanding your profile, filling your DS-160 form, answer structuring and multiple mocks. Catherine and Kevin were in fact part of this seven day program. So do check the link for this in the description box below. Apart from this, there are different ways in which you can prepare with me. You can take a single session for answer structuring or a single mock session. And for the F1 Visa 2023, we also have something really special. This is a self-preparation course which teaches you how to prepare. It shows you sample answers. It shows you a lot of templates and you can use this course to prepare at your own time and pace. So the link for all this is in the description box below. We also have tons of free resources to make sure to check them out as well. Signing off for now, but before you go, make sure that you watch this video. So this, if you are just starting out in your F1 visa journey, this is a video to start with. So make sure that you watch that and stay tuned. A lot more useful content coming your way. See you in the next one. Bye.